brothers and sisters. I just want to draw your attention to the floor. So take a good look at the floor. So everything you see on the floor is actually their DNA. And you here also represent our ancestors. You represent those who were taken away from here. Unfortunately, we are standing on top of everything they left. Feces, urine, blood, vomit, saliva, tears and all that. And at this juncture, we are like right above this place was the Church of England. And underneath the Church of England is the male dungeons. Up there, they constructed an observation post where some of their soldiers would stand and watch. And interestingly, the entrance of that observation post is closer to the entrance of the church. Mm -hmm. So whoever passed by to worship their God mm -hmm. could smell, could see, and hear whatever was going on in the dungeons. Mm -hmm. Those in the dungeons also heard what was going on upstairs. That will lead you to the last one. So brothers and sisters, this is the last room in the male dungeon. And you realize that this room is brighter. This room is so bright than the other rooms. There's enough light coming here. <coughs> the British intentionally created this room for it to be bright. So the thing is, when the ships arrived, they didn't just move all of them into the ship. They sorted them out. They picked those who were strong and fit enough to survive the journey, to survive the middle passage. Those who were sick and incapable of surviving the journey stayed behind in the dungeons till the last of them died. On records, we learned that those ones were near death. Within a day or two, they would die. They would not put them on the ships, but rather they would leave them in the dungeons to die. And after they died, their bodies were thrown into the sea. So those who are fit or strong enough to survive the middle passage were well chained, shackled, and roped. Gradually, the dungeon was emptied. From here, the male parties were taken through a tunnel to the door of no return. So I'm talking about this wall. So brothers and sisters, right behind the wall, right behind it, the British built a tunnel or a passage. So what I'm always trying to say is that at one point in time, that end was opened up. So it was opened. So in chains and in shackles, all the men were taken through the tunnel to the door of no return. The ones that were strong yes. helped them to take out that. To the tunnel. That, to the door of no return. That tunnel. Yes. But unfortunately, the tunnel is closed now. Um, around 1837, the English passed a law in their parliament abolishing or ending the transportation of Africans from here as slaves in America, Jamaica, Barbados, and other parts. Also knows that when they passed that law, it did not end slavery. Right. Slavery continued, yeah. still within the British territories, till 1834. Slavery continued in the United States till 1865, after the Civil War. Slavery continued still in Brazil till 1888. So overall, the transatlantic slave trade continued for more than 400 years. It started in the 15th century and ended in the late 19th century. So though we cannot go through the tunnel, when we go up again, I'm going to show you some part of the tunnel and the exit. Again, you find flowers, you find wheat. We had these ones in memory of the victims of the Black Holocaust. 
Some of them on behalf of people like us who come here to visit. Some of them on behalf of the world. Last but not the least, I also want to draw your attention to this altar. Today, this room is a sacred ground for the local people. In this contest, I'm talking about the type of spirituality we practiced as Africans before the Europeans introduced the religion to us. And to me, I find it difficult saying that what we practiced here was a religion. It wasn't a religion. Because when we talk about religion, religions were invented by men. Every religion follows a certain dogma. There are certain places where these religions were invented. But when we talk about the African spirituality, nobody invented it. There's no place of invention in Africa. So to us, it was inborn. We had it in us that God created us as human beings. God created all the elements around us. And the elements God created, or the natural things God created, are not mere objects. We had the knowledge and belief that we could communicate through the element to God. God will hear us. Whatever we need from him, he's going to grant us. So that was our knowledge and belief before the Europeans came. Often people are ignorant. They say Africans worship idols, but they don't know the concept of the spirituality we had here. So before the Europeans arrived, you know, this whole space is a rock. It was seen as a sacred ground because this is where the local people came to communicate to God. When the Europeans arrived, the people of Cape Coast had to relocate the shrine from here. They took portions of the earth they communicated through before the Europeans arrived. Later, the Europeans left. And when they left, around 1973, this altar was erected, the sacred stones was returned. So till date, whatever needs to be done in accordance with the African spirituality, it's still done. The name of the deity or the oracle is Nana Tabia. So till date, people come here to pray and worship. So the priest will perform a libation for us to see. He prayed and first of all he said that he thanks the Almighty God or the Supreme Being for bringing all of you here safely. Whatever, you, whatever you're doing here should be successful. On your way back, may the Almighty God and the spirit of our ancestors guide and protect you so that you get there safely. Again, may he also continue to protect us in our daily endeavor so that all of us will be successful and fruitful. So that is a prayer the priest performed for us. 